Usually, if you search online to install mods, people are going to tell you to use the BG3 Mod Manager, which I could not get to work. So, we're going to cover how to install mods as well as create mods. So, the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is the game, of course, and you're going to need a mod. So, I'm using the Visible Shields mod here as an example. I think it's a really good one, and I'd recommend that you get it. So, you're going to need, it's going to come with these two files normally. These are unpacked for me. It's going to come with the pack and the JSON. You're going to need both of these. And you're going to need this directory right here. I've actually made a shortcut to this folder so I can get to it more easily. But you're going to go again to this one up here in Baldur's Gate 3. You're going to go into mods. And then as you can see, I have a bunch of mods already put in here. You're going to put visible shields.pack or whatever dot pack it is in here. And then you're going to go back out and you're going to go to player profiles and go to public. And you're going to see this mod settings file. So if I open that up, this is how it's going to look by default. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to edit the mod order here. And we're going to need to add an entry for this mod. So you're going to need to remove this slash here. And then we're going to need to add a new node down here. And then I'm going to go over here to my copy that I have just to make things easier. We're going to need to add two nodes here in the children section. Actually, I think we're going to need to add another children section as well. Yes, we're going to need to add another children section as well. So let's add that. And then close it up. I believe that matches. Yes, okay. So then we're going to need to add these two nodes here. I'll put a link in the description to an example one. So we would add these two here. This is the ID for the, as you can see, highlights right here. This is the ID for Gustav Dev, which I think is the game files. I'm not sure why it's Gustav Dev and not Gustav, but okay. And then we would grab here this node, copy this one. Now we're going to need that info JSON file. So we go in here and it's going to give us the ID right here. So we're going to copy that. And then if you didn't have it, you would put it in right here put it in right here and then we're gonna go back to the info JSON and then we're gonna look for here so the name and folder are both visible shields so you would go here and we would put it in right here and make sure that it's matches the case now I don't know though this one does come with an MD5 right here I don't know what that does exactly it's not necessary though because Gustav Dev doesn't have one so you would save the mod settings and when you load up the game it should be working now I had some problems where it would overwrite the mod settings so I actually did here as you can see I have it set to read only so I don't know if you have to do that but it overwrote it sometimes for me so I went ahead and set it to read only now if you set player profiles to read only as you can see the save games folders inside of that so you wouldn't want to do that if you, if you were gonna set it to read only okay so if you want to make your own mod you're gonna need a couple of things obviously you're gonna need the game you're going to need someone else's mod. You're going to need the exporter tool slash converter app slash lslib. And you're going to need a text editor, preferably one that can search inside of files like Kate. That's the one I'm using anyway. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to this directory, which I have open here. This has all the game files in it. Probably going to want to unpack Gustav and shared though again if you want to edit a model or something you'll open another one of these I recommend you copy these into a different folder then you're going to open up the export tool run that obviously you're going to need wine but you're going to need that for like everything go over here to pack slash lsv you're going to direct the converter app to whichever whichever directory and pack you want to open and then you're going to tell it to extract the package then you can search inside of the files to find the thing you want to edit. You're going to need to set up your mod directory to look something like this. Hopefully I've created a reasonably understandable graphic here for this. And the main reason you're going to need someone else's mod is, so for example, if I go into, let's say, Visible Shields here. Now I've actually extracted their mod using the converter app as well, which is something you can use. Go into mods here and then you're going to need this meta LSX file. I tried creating my own and it did not work for some reason. So just copy someone else's. Let's open it up. So you copy it 
and you can go online and get find a UUID generator or you can just write one out I guess if you want to type it out so you'd get a UUID put it in here so your main things you need to add are the deed name and folder so you'd edit those to match how whatever you've decided to name your mod and the UUID you pick then once you've done everything and edited the files you want to edit you would go back over here to the converter app and you would repackage now I think you can use this one the non HC version but it seems like it makes files a little bit bigger than the game files so I don't know exactly what's different and I don't know exactly what the priority does so if it's not working maybe you can do that okay let's take a look at the game files real quick so you know what to expect so if I open up the shared pack which I've unpacked here go into public and then you're gonna see these two you do not need these in your mod you just put the name of your mod here so we're gonna go into here and then we're gonna go to stats generated data and character is the one I want for this one now we're gonna search for mind flare which is gonna give us the basic mind flare right here now you'll notice down here it says using mind flare these are gonna be enemies that are using this same template but they're going to inherit their stuff from up here and then they're just gonna make the changes down here so let's say we wanted to change the basic mind flare here I would copy all this stuff and then I would select everything now obviously you don't want you'd want to make a copy of this file into your mod before you did this I'm just doing this as an example so you want to clear everything we want to paste the mind flare entry back in here and then if we say let's say we want to give them some extra health so we can put them up to say like 90 health and we could say increase their dexterity if we want to increase their armor class or we could just go to the armor class right here and put that up to 15 if we wanted so if we wanted to make make it harder to hit them with like dexterity saving spells we could put it right here if we want to increase their wisdom or constitution we could do that I'm not exactly sure how the constitution and health interact with each other so I don't know if the whatever is right here is just what their health is and then the constitution is just for constitution checks so you could edit that and of course there's other things down here like you could increase their dark vision range or you could add a different passive to them so like I think you could yeah like right here they're immune to being prone it says or crippled so if you want to add another immunity you could do that I'm not sure where you decide whether they're like abilities and spells are because I don't really see those listed here so that's probably in some other file so again you'd make your changes you would save it and then you'd go package up your mod now when you load up the launcher it's going to give you some warnings about data mismatch and mods I don't think any of that actually matters just just hit play and ignore it and then when you go to load up a save it may say like oh there's a mod problem or something if it says one of your mods is missing then you probably have some issue or some other mod is making a different mod not work properly but otherwise you can just ignore all that stuff I don't think there's any problems that it'll cause obviously if it does cause a problem then check to make sure you've got all your mods in the right order and everything and should be okay